need divine breakthrough. For some of you, you need financial doors to be opened in your life. For some of you, you need to get closer and know God more and the more. For some of you, you need to fast in order to see your breakthrough coming into me. For some of you, you need in every aspect of your life to have patience. Come on, come on. Yes. And because of all this thing, that is why your butt is having effect upon your come life. On, come on. He said, never. Oh, he's a great man. He's very honorable. And as well as he's a mighty man of it. Yes. But the key thing is that he has a butt. Yes. <laughs> and every one of us can be so. You can be great, wonderful. You can seem powerful for things to happen. You can still have a bat. Look at somebody and say, Are you working on your bat? Expect an answer. Expect an answer. Look at that person still. Expect an answer. Mm. <laughs> Ask the person, Are you working on your bat? <laughs> somebody, are you here with me? What is the bat in Neymar's life? What is the bat in Neymar's life? Look into your Bible. Let me show you the bat in Neymar's life. But he was a leper. Wow. He was what? I didn't hear you. He was what? A leper. The guy is great. He's wonderful. But he's a leper. And all this while, he's looking for deliverance. Somebody listen. That is what we are in. All this while, we're seeking the face of God because this is our month of breaking generational curses. And every part in our lives, to some of you, you don't know why you want to move towards this direction. But there's a force that is what linking you towards this direction. You don't know why, but there is a part. And I told you on Friday that, look, if David could have done something about what Nathan came into his house to say, after David slept with Bathsheba, God sent forth the prophet, entered into David's palace, and said, look, there is a man who has a lot of sheep and everything and one day there is also another person who is a poor man who stays behind this man and one day something happened the bible says that when he had a guest he went in for this poor man only sheep and took it and killed it for the guest to eat it and Nathan didn't finish and David said who did this who did this this person must die and Nathan said it's you is that me what have I done and then the man of God said because you have so many wives but somebody had only one wife, you took the wife and killed the husband, David. Is that the right thing? David knelt down immediately and started praying. This is one of the things why God loved David. David knelt down, realized his mistake, all of a sudden, he started praying. And while the man of God was about to leave David's palace, God spoke to the man of God. He did and came back and spoke to David and said, because of your heart and how God loved you, this thing is not going to come upon you, but it will come upon what? Your children. Some of the listen, that is where the curse is. See, he said, it will come upon your children. I expect that, I was reading the Bible critically, and I expect that as soon as a man of God curse you, right, it is dangerous. Don't, the, the worst thing you can do is to talk about a man of God. Amen. If you don't know, go read Numbers chapter 12 and learn about Miriam. What happened to her? Miriam didn't. Miriam spoke against Moses. God got angry and said, Moses, get out there. I will strike her. I want to kill her. Moses said, no, I'm not going, Lord. Please don't do it. Boom. She also became leprous. And note, the next chapter, as they set off to go on a journey, Miriam died. It wasn't long. God is so furious. Look, they just set up the journey. Okay, let's continue. We are in the desert. Boom. They set off and boom. The next stop, Miriam died. The most dangerous thing you can do. And the Bible said that, oh my goodness, the man knelt down. He didn't insult the man of God. He is just doing his work. And the man of God came back and said, because of what you have done, the curse will be on the day. And read the Bible very well. David could have done something about it. And some of you, this is what is worrying us. You don't know what your parents have said when you were young. Maybe you are too stubborn like me. When I was coming up, but some of the listeners, I'm still dealing with my generational what? Curses. Okay. And so things that have been spoken, words have been fed That's why the Bible says death and life lies where? In the power of the tongue. What people speak against you can really. So when somebody speaks anything negative, look, this man don't allow anybody. Nullify it. Amen. The cancel it. Say so no. 
who said that you think I'm no, I'm not going to be poor. I shall be rich. Amen. I shall be filthy rich Amen. and watch me very well. Amen. I shall be a man and a woman of influence and affluence. Amen. I will affect my generation. Amen. I will make sure that look of what you have said, God will lift me to the state of prominence that in Jesus' name I shall always be the head and not the tail. I will be a bad and not beneath. I will be at the topmost part and not the bottomless part. Somebody, are you here with me? I said is what God has made you. Don't sit down for anybody to speak any negative thing against you. For it can be a case. And David deviated. Instead of David to pray about this, David did not. Do you know what David did? The woman that she took, that she impregnated, and the baby that is in the womb, that the man of God said that the baby would die, his focus rather went there. So he prayed for the baby, ah, and as soon as the baby died, he forgot about the whole thing. And David said, okay, now that the child is there, I will rise and eat. But there is one more war he needs to do. The curse that God said it will come to your point of generation. And read the Bible. It started from Absalom. Mm. Absalom, go walk up and then rebel against the father who wanted to be king. And the Bible says that, look, oh my goodness, David told Joel, come on, train this guy, my son, but make sure you don't kill him. Bring to me, Absalom was running when his head was caught up into what in a, in a tree, and he was hanging there like that. And Joab read there, took a spear and smote him on the feet rib and killed Absalom. It wasn't only Absalom, read again. Adonijah also rose against he's a case, he's a case in the family. Yeah, read again. The only daughter that what he had. The daughter was raped by the old brother, Amnon. And Amnon also was killed by one of the brothers. So in David's house, there's trouble. There's trouble. What kind of trouble? A case which he didn't deal with. And then he reached Solomon. And Solomon also came into the beat. The men in king, he said, oh my goodness, look at nice woman and line up 300 wives and 700 concubines, girlfriends. Ah, Solomon. Somebody says Solomon. Solomon. You must have said that what is happening in the world, loins of David, is the case. Generational curses that has what? Not been broken. Generational So it is not only at the time that this is existing, it existed in the Bible. And today it still exists. Have you asked yourself one day that why is it that every business I lift my hand to touch, my goodness, it doesn't work? Yeah. Have you asked yourself? Have you seen that and asked yourself that all my friends that are around me, everything they do is for sin, but only me, because one, you are a target and you shouldn't give up. You have to be praying very well and you have to know the root cause of what is causing this business not to work so that if there are certain what generational curses, you have to do what? Deal with it. But somebody, I'm telling you this morning, you are blessed to have listened to this word for there is liberty in the house of the Lord. And this morning, thank God that God is setting you free from every entrapment of the enemy. That when you hear the word, you will go back and do a good warfare yes. over your life. As a matter of fact, it is not that everybody, all of us can also see, but many a times there are cases that follow us. Naaman was perfect, but he has a bad. And where is this thing coming from? And he needed a solution. So the Bible says that Naaman wrote the letter to the king of Israel saying that, please, I've heard that there is healing in your what, country. Please come. And the king said, you see how he has started a war against me. And the Bible says that the man of God, Elijah, heard about the king, renting all, all his clothes out, which shows what? A sign of indignation. I'm angry. And the man of God said, no, 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 king, don't do that. Please, if Naaman come into this place, send him to me. They went and told Naaman. So Naaman came straight to the man of God. When Naaman came to the man of God, the man of God said, that, look, all your problem is that you just need to walk, to go and bath in the pool of Shiloh. Seven times, that's all. Somebody says seven times. Yeah. Which stands for perfection. That is all the man of God said. He said, look at him. Many a times, a lot of people look at their position. But somebody, the Bible says, touch not my word, my anointed, and do what? My prophet, no harm. You can touch the man of God. He just spoke a simple word. 
And then because he is a king and he feels he's honored, but he is leprosy too. And he might be holding things with his hand like this. Or whatever he thinks. A leper. Just walking. Maybe one side also is, you know. But people even don't have pity upon themselves. They ask you to do a simple thing. Some of the listening, many a times that's what happened in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The man of God asks you to do just what? A simple thing. Because you decide to go and do your own thing, that is how it's coming about that you're struggling. Come on, somebody listen to me. He was struggling until the servant came and said, Ah, but you, you are rich and everything, you are a king. And this man of this man of God, you went there, he didn't ask you to bring all your money or anything. He just asked you, Hey, can you go and jump into the pool? Jump into the pool seven times. And the servant said, But okay, this is not a difficult thing to be done. If he asks you to do something great, would you do it? He said, Yes. Then why is it that he asks you to do something simple? And you can't do it. In the house of God, one of the things that brings a lot of what he brings is to our breakthrough, and we can succeed as a result of not listening and following all this. And those things become like what? A hindrance. So that is always pulling you. Somebody listen to me. I'm telling you. The man of God says, sit down, you get up, and then you go and walk. See? It, it, it is hard. Simple instruction brings you and releases you into the perfection of God. And the Bible says that now he did it. When he did it, he went and bathed himself seven times. Boom! He became whole. He started walking uprightly everywhere he goes. It baffled him. And then he came to the man of God, brought so much money and possessions and everything. It's a man of God. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Please. Oh, look, I'm here of my leprosy. Everything is gone. I brought you all this thing. The man of God said, uh uh uh. Take it away. <laughs> Take it away. There are some men of God too that they always follow their stomach. Yeah. And you have to be very, very careful. In my language, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, I want to repeat it again. Uh -huh. Let me explain that to you. Bread of deceit is good to a man, but at the end, you shall pay the consequences of it. Ooh. It is not everything that uh, some of the men of God, you, you go to this person's house, you eat, you go here, you do, you, you eat. Hey! <laughs> you can warn yourself. And some of you too, that is what it, it is. You have to watch where you need to go. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord order your steps. When he brought all the money, it was huge sum of money. If we calculate, last time, I'll show you what still is. Talent and service, how they are all exchanged in equivalent to our what money currently. And the money that he mentioned there was not a small money. But look at it. The Bible says he said, I don't want it. Whilst he did it, was going, then the servant who was called Gehazi, somebody say Gehazi, yes. somebody say Gehazi, yes. went and then he turned himself. The servant of Elijah said, My goodness. My, my master didn't take all these things and let this guy go. No. Uh, um, master, please, I want to go to the restroom. I'll be back. When he turned himself, he ran and went to meet the man and said, please. My master said he's going to have some visitors. So can you please give him some few things? Some of them listen to me. If your time has not come, wait for it. God has a blessing for you. But if your time has not come, you wait patiently. God's delayance is not his denial. And this guy went, collected all the things that this king wanted to give to the man of God, and went to the house and hid it. And then he came into the chambers again, as if he went to the restroom and came back. And then he didn't know that he was dealing with a prophet. Come on, somebody. There's a prophet in the house. Prophet in the house. And then the man of God said, Where did you go? He said, Oh, me? I told you I'm just going to use some distance. I didn't go anywhere. The man of God said, uh, 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 I'm asking you again, where did you go? Somebody, where did you go last night? Before you were here. 